Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are most welcome here. I need a piece of outdoor fall decor to replace the coastal piece that I've had up all summer. And I've found some items at the Dollar Tree that I think I can use to make an outdoor wall fall decor piece. Let's go have some fun. I wanted to start by talking about my inspiration. Now I wanted to create some outdoor wall decor for the fall, so a sort of a harvest theme. And then I saw a picture of a mid-century modern style clock, and it was a sort of a Sputnik clock. So I've just done a search on Google to show you examples of Sputnik style mid-century clocks. And most of them that are, at least in this search, are symmetrical. So this was the sort of idea that I wanted to use for the art that I was going to create. I have these old fence pickets. The bottom of them are quite rotten, but the tops of them, for most of them, are pretty good. And I think that the style of this fence picket is called Gothic. Now you can purchase new fence pickets if you want to make a project like this. And you can sometimes purchase even individual fence pickets, and you should be able to get them for about $2 each. Um, for this one, you only need 16 inches of length. Now these pickets are long, they're like six feet long, but you could get a three foot fence picket and then just use the top 16 inches. So you, you don't need all of that length. I have these pickets in two different sizes because some of them are from my property and some of them are from my parents' property when they took a fence down. So some of them are three and a half inches wide and some of them are three and a quarter inches wide so I did make sure that I had six three and a half inch wide pickets to work with and again I'm going to use the top 16 inches of the picket from that interesting gothic detail at the top down. Now as I mentioned I'm going to use six of these to make a sort of a starburst pattern so in order to use six of them I'm going to cut them into little points and I'm going to cut a 60 degree angle. So what I'm doing is setting my radial alarm saw to a 60 degree cut and my radial alarm saw doesn't quite make it to 60 degrees. If yours does, good. Set it to 60 degrees and I'm just going to measure down 16 inches on the first picket and then measure across. So again it's three and a half inches wide so I measure to one and three quarters inches, that's the center, that's where I want the point to be. So it would be 16 inches from the top to the center of the point. And I cut it. And then I just cut all of the other pickets, all five, by lining them up with the first picket. And that way they're all the same length. Here you can see how they look when you place them together. Now I'm cutting the same side, so you're looking at the back of one here and the front of another, but you get the general idea. Now with those all cut, I then again found the center an inch and three quarters down because again, that's where I want the point to be. So when I make the second cut, I want to make sure that it's right in the middle. Otherwise it might be difficult to figure out where to position the saw. Now I did again use my picket on which I'd made the first cut as my guide, but I lined them up at the top of the cut not at the top of the picket. And now that I have two that are cut to a point, you can see again what they look like when we put them together. So three of them will make a half of our burst. Now I did have to trim a couple of them a little bit, so make the point a little bit more narrow. And I think that's because my saw won't go all the way to 60 degrees, but I don't really know. If you know why, let me know. Maybe it has something to do with the process that I followed for cutting it. I think it pretty close. It looks pretty good to me. Um, the truth is we're not going to see the center of this when it's all finished, but I would still like it all to match up well. Every season, Dollar Tree has these garden stakes, some kind of decoration that you can stick in the ground with a long stake. And this year for the first time I saw these corn garden stakes and I love how dimensional they are. You know, they're not just sort of a flat or roughly flat picture of something. They're three dimensional. They're supposed to look like corn. And honestly, there's a Dollar Tree near me that got their fall stuff in, I want to say mid-July. And I saw these things 
and I had no idea what I might want to do with them, but I knew I would be sorry if I didn't buy them. So I bought three of them at that time. And then when I had the idea to create this outdoor wall decor, I realized that these were the pieces that I needed. So I went out and bought three more. So yes, we have six of these corn stakes from the Dollar Tree. And then I bought this Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint. It says brilliant metal finish. And the color is metallic dark copper. So I'm going to spray paint my corn stakes. So I took the tags off and I brought them outside. And I do have a little bit of a pile of pea stone left from when I was creating my tropical garden. Um, I still need to distribute this in a few places. But right now it's super handy for spray painting garden stakes. So I've stuck all of my corn in the pea stone and it's standing up pretty well. And I do have this box that I'm putting behind the corn just so the spray paint doesn't get on the stone wall. Um, although that's pretty far away. And you can see it's, it's pretty windy the day that I'm doing this. Um, so I found that I could spray paint them and then just to turn them and that allowed me to spray paint the other sides. And I gave them a couple of coats. It didn't really take more than a couple of coats uh, with me turning them like that, but I did have to go back in and try to get any spots that I missed later. And I really should be wearing a respirator. What I do sometimes if I go outside and I find I have forgotten my respirator is I just hold my breath while I'm spray painting and then I'll walk far away from where I'm spray painting, take a breath and then walk back. Now I'm going to assemble the starburst made out of the fence pieces together and I'm going to use a staple gun and I'm going to use some wood glue. I have Gorilla Wood Glue here and I have to do it upside down. Obviously we want the staples to be on the wrong side. So I'm just going to do it a couple of pieces at a time to start. So just put some glue where those two pieces join and I did put three staples on each seam. Now a couple of times the staples didn't go in well and I just pulled them out and redid them. And that's because I'm stapling on a card table here. I really should have stapled on a harder surface. Uh, I think that would have worked better. I did put a picket behind the ones that I was stapling um, for some of these while I stapled them. And then once I got down to the last three, I did them together because I wanted to make sure that I got the best possible fit since they don't fit together completely perfectly. Then with those stapled together, I flipped it over um, and just wiped with a damp cloth any excess glue. Now, I do know that I want to paint this and my bold choice is black, although I haven't committed to it yet at this point. So I took one of the little leftover pieces, little triangle shaped pieces outside and I spray painted it with some black paint and I'm also trying some acrylic paint here. Now, I've actually made one of these before. Yes, and I'm still not very good at it. You can see I'm getting better at it. If you look carefully at this white one, it's pretty wonky. My current one is at least a little bit better. This one I painted white and I think I was painting um, outdoors, like painting a uh, porch. So I think that that's outdoor latex paint that I then sanded. When I painted this one, I sanded the whole piece, then I painted it with the latex paint, and then I sanded some off. I thought this time I would try not sanding the piece and painting over it because I think I would get a similar look, but we'll see, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I wanted to see how the whole thing might look with a white finish. So I, I took my spray painted corn stakes and put them around the white one. Now I bought these burlap leaves at the Dollar Tree and they come in different colors. I just wanted to show you some different options. So if you do like the overall sort of shape and idea of this, but maybe you don't like the colors I chose, I wanted to show you some different options. So there are these tan burlap leaves. Um, and I also have these maple leaves that are, you know, fake maple leaves, plastic or silk, or I don't know what they are from the Dollar Tree in this gorgeous blue. But the burlap leaves also come in this nice red, which I think could be beautiful. Now I did buy one other thing and that's this American flower garden steak, which is probably left over from the 4th of July. Right now they have sunflowers, but I liked the shape of this better than the sunflowers, which aren't quite as symmetrical and I am going for symmetry here. So that's just a possibility, not 
those colors, but something like that in the middle. But I'm going to be brave and paint this black. So you can see here the two different black samples. Now the spray paint gave a nice solid coverage and the other one, the acrylic paint, I just painted it on roughly to see if I could get something that looked a little more distressed or weathered. So what I decided to do was start with the acrylic and paint it on roughly because I can always add more paint. So I thought I would do that and see how it looks. And so you can see how it looks. It's very rough. And honestly, I love it. I love it, but not for this. It's terrible for this. Um, part, of, part of the thinking here is if this is going to be modern, but also maybe sort of rustic or harvest, I have to find the right balance with how weathered things look because I think of modern as being pretty tidy. So I decided to give this another coat of the black paint and, and really try to cover it completely. Now, so I could have just spray painted it, right? And, and I would have gotten that complete coverage. Now for the edges, what I ended up doing, and I probably could have done this for the top too, is adding some water to the paint, almost 50-50. And that went on so much more quickly and easily. And then I did just touch up the top any place where there was maybe a little knot hole or something that didn't get completely covered. I used that watered down paint and filled it in. Now, with that all painted nice and solid, here's a sort of rough idea of what this is gonna look like. And I do love these colors together. I love that bronze color or copper color, dark copper. <laughs> I love that color. And I love the blue of those leaves. The larger leaves are more blue. The smaller leaves have more green in them. And I just think they're really beautiful. And I love that with the black and the tan. Now I do have this sort of coppery pumpkin. It is another garden steak from the Dollar Tree and I love it. Um, so I considered also putting that in the center, but I would lose my idea of having symmetry. But it's another option for you, putting some different sort of garden stake in the middle. They also have smaller ones that aren't garden stakes, smaller pumpkins, but they don't have that beautiful texture. Now, what I decided to do is not cut the corn stakes. And because they were stuck in the pea stone, the bottoms of them didn't get painted. And because I'm, it is now nighttime. Uh, when I am doing this, I decided to just try using some acrylic paint to paint the bottoms of them because I'm not going to cut them. I'm going to attach them to each other because I think that everything will be stronger if I do it that way. So um, basically we have one piece running across the whole wooden star instead of one piece sticking out from the wooden star. Now with the Americana Garden stake, it's three sort of flower shapes. They're held together with a piece of wire, but the stake itself is glued on. And so what I did was I used the knife from my Leatherman and sort of sliced at that glue until I could sort of get it under and, and pry that stake off. Some stakes at the Dollar Tree are easy to pull off and some are harder to pull off. That was a harder one. And then I just took that piece of wire out. So I had the three separate flower pieces and I thought it would be nice if I could get a color sort of like that pumpkin. So I tried mixing red with this metallic, it's folk art chocolate brown multi-surface metallic paint. Um, it's what I used to paint the bottom of the corn stakes. So I tried mixing a little red and I thought I might also try mixing some orange or some yellow if this didn't work. When I painted that mixture on the red flower, it, I couldn't even tell that I was painting it. So I decided to just use the chocolate brown metallic paint by itself. And this took two coats because, um, you know, the one coat didn't give it very good coverage, but the second coat adhered to the first coat very well. I wasn't sure what I would be able to use to attach the corn sticks to each other. So I started with straight super glue and that didn't work. And then I tried super glue gel and that also did not work. Um, so what I ended up using was E6000 and I held it together with tiny little strips of duct tape while the E6000 dried. And then I thought I would just put some duct tape in the middle because you're not going to see that. But I tried to keep the duct tape fairly discreet. Once I had attached the corn stakes to each other, I just stapled them to the back of the piece um, at either end. So two staples per. And I used some deeper staples for this so that they would go over the pieces because the pieces are laying over each other. And now there's some mostly lost footage here in which I screw a screw into the middle 
of the back of one of the wooden pieces, about uh, just a little bit down from the decorative part. And then I take some 22 gauge florist wire and wrap it around that. And that's just for hanging this up. And even though I've lost the footage of me screwing a screw in, I'm, I'm sure you can imagine how that went. I just drilled a pilot hole and screwed it in. Um, and you will be able to see the back of the finished piece. So you will be able to see that at the end. Um, I turn it over. Now to finish this off with the blue leaves, I'm going to iron them and I'm going to iron them on a very low temperature setting somewhere around silk. And I cut them apart from each other and I do end up cutting off the little branch parts as well. So just um, to, to make them a little more flat because quite often when you get these faux foliage from the Dollar Tree, it's um, crinkly. So I've, I've ironed them before just on their branches before I use them, just so that they uh, look a little nicer. So just give those an iron and cut them apart. And I only used one branch of those. And then I used hot glue to attach the burlap leaves. I took the little wire parts off the burlap leaves and then just hot glued them, four of them. So the top one is pointing straight up. That's where my hanger is. And I just put them around evenly at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And then I just arranged the other leaves. Four of the larger leaves in the middle of the one, so at the 45 degree marks. And then I arranged the little leaves on top of that, and then the two final large leaves on top of that. And again, just used hot glue. Now I gave the Americana flower another coat of the Folk Art Chocolate Brown Multi-Surface Metallic Paint. And then I also gave it a coat of Mod Podge. Now I decided to use the gloss Mod Podge because this is metal and I thought it would look nice with a gloss cover. It is a little bit tacky. You can cover that up with a sealant if you don't want it to be tacky. I don't think it's really a problem here. So once those dried, I attached them together with their wire. And then I tried hot glue to glue this on and I think I didn't let it cool enough the first time it fell off. So I tried again and this time I was patient. You could feel the warmth of the glue through the piece because it's metal. So I waited for it to cool and it stayed just fine. Now you can see the back of the piece here and to the right you can see the screw just near my thumb and the wire that I have around the screw for hanging this up. And here's the piece on my front porch. I am really pleased with it, if I'm honest. Um, for one thing, I think it does contrast nicely with my siding, which is yellow. So it contrasts nicely with a light color background. And then I also hung it on my garden gate in the back. And so this leads me to believe that I have another project in the future because I'm going to need to make some sort of tropical art to go back here with my tropical garden. So what did you think of our outdoor wall decor project? As I mentioned, I sort of liked it, and I don't always like the things I make, particularly not when I take a risk, like I did with the black paint. It was easy to make too, just cut some wood, paint some things, and assemble. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoy this sort of content, and then I know to bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. I'd also enjoy hearing from you in the comments if there's anything at all you'd like to talk to me about. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.